finally got these sweet seats installed. All right, so we are down here in my underground bunker slash garage slash, well, what it actually is is my underground parking of my apartment. I can't really do that much work down here, but what I can do is start sorting out interior work and some wiring and, and little things like that. Um, so that kind of brings us to, to this and the start of the project, I guess, um, even though it's kind of been going on for five years now. But at this point, what I really want to do is gut the interior. I want to replace these seats, even though they're, they still look good, they don't feel good. Um, these are from a 1993 Forerunner. I picked these up for like 30 bucks for a pair right before we left on our trip. And they were good for a while, but now that we've had uh, the experience of driving in a newer truck with proper seats, um, these seem to just kill our back every time we're in them. And we have some grandiose plans of some long-term travel again. So we're gonna swap these out and I don't know, look forward to some comfort in this thing. So yeah, so I'm gonna start by just pulling everything out of here and I'll show you what seats I picked up. I'm excited. So things have snowballed a little bit. Um, the whole seat swapping process, which was supposed to be, which should have been pretty fast, um, turned into a four hour debacle of me scraping off sound deadening. Starting last year, we started to have a little bit of a swamp truck kind of smell in the interior. Um, wasn't super major, but it was lingering and not the best. So I ended up uh, getting new carpet from ACC old carpet was pretty gross and dingy after uh, a couple years on the road. So there's some water getting in um, up under here on that side of the truck where uh, there's some wiring that goes, goes through. Normally it's not a problem because they're like inner fender liners, but, but because we have uh, the Toyota fiberglass fenders on here and uh, no fender liners anymore. Over the wet winter, we were getting quite a bit of water coming in. Well, quite a bit for an interior that's not supposed to have water in it. And it was just coming down in here and uh, kind of resting in the low areas. And some of it was seeping underneath the uh, sound deadening that we had in here and just not drying out. So luckily it was just wet and kind of gross. Uh, no rust or anything forming, which is good, but that's where we're at right now. Um, also decided to redo some wiring and uh, yeah, starting from scratch in here, which is pretty cool. the brackets I picked up for the new Corbo seats we're gonna be running. Um, the one thing that I had to do ahead of time was I had to make some measurements just on where the bolt holes were um, on each side because it turns out that they have there are three different seat bracket options for Toyota pickups um, for each side so for whatever reason they're not all, all the Toyota pickups of this era are not all the same so if you think Hey, I'll just get the ones for a uh, 89 to 95 pickup. That'll work. Mm, not always. Yeah, so part of uh, moving to Alberta is going through the provincial inspection on the vehicle. So one thing I did was put these, um, these are the least expensive uh, rally armor mud flaps I could find because I don't have the original mud flaps. Um, and yesterday I took off the um, window tint that we had put on in Mexico. I was sad to say goodbye to that $40 tint. It looked really great on the outside but I really couldn't see anything at night on the inside, so it kind of makes sense why you're not allowed to have it. Um, but yeah, just took a heat gun to it, peeled it off nice and easy. And then another thing that doesn't fly here are these uh, taillight lenses. Yeah, so I grabbed these from a market in Ecuador because the other ones were cracked, but apparently these are for Hilux and not DOT approved in North America because it has one reflector in the back, but it's supposed to have one on the side as well. So. Just grab these TYC ones from Amazon, which are DOT approved. So it's gonna be a little minty. Ooh, so nice. Except they go this way. So the one thing that was important when we we're trying to sort out what seats to go with was uh, trying to find something that would bolt in. And whether that was 
like bolting with very minor uh, fabrication or modifications or um, bolt in directly because as you know I'm in underground parking I don't have my welder here uh, I'm sure they wouldn't really appreciate me coming around with a four and a half inch angle grinder and uh, fabbing stuff up so that was part of the reason for going with these seats and with these brackets was just something that I can pull out bolt in and save me a pile of time and rather than having to run around to uh, junkyards trying to find a seat that would work and then fabbing up brackets and so on so we got the Corbo Baja RS's which means they recline like real seats and uh, this one looks like it fits pretty well okay Ashley's gonna be stoked let's just see let's see they work the factory seats were like well-worn and in terms of like material like all the rest of this stuff in, in this truck but just the foam had kind of given out and uh, yeah, just wasn't comfortable anymore. So yeah, it's kind of based the decision on price and the fact that they had brackets that would bolt in for me into this truck. I've had an opportunity to sit in a few aftermarket seats and the, the Corbo suspension seat I sat in was uh, probably one of my favorites. So made it a pretty easy decision and for this truck, they fit and uh, they fit us. So the nice thing about them is they, we set up a little, well, I have a super short torso and it, these seem to help me sit up a little taller in the seat so I can actually see over the hood. Finally got these sweet seats installed. I got my Tundra floor mats in here. But yeah, it's kind of cool after uh, spending about 100,000 kilometers in this truck. Ashley and I started to get a pretty good idea of what we liked and what we didn't like about it. Um, and one of the things that we didn't necessarily like were the old Forerunner seats that I bought for $30 and swapped in here. Um, I think they had 400,000 kilometers on them when I put them in here and then we put another 100,000 of uh, 100,000 kilometers of seat time in them since then. So these are a little bit more supportive. These things are great. Um, these are the Corbo Baja RS's, so the reclining version of their suspension seat. Um, I'd sat in the non-reclining version of one before and was sold essentially, but knew that for this truck we would it makes way more sense to have a reclining version of a seat. Yeah, one thing that I know we need to do is figure out a cup holder situation. So that's great, but unless you have a small disposable mug, no, it does not fit. Let's see. No, it doesn't fit. Yeah, we'll figure out some sort of water bottle and cup holder situation and maybe a center console here. Um, I know that a six inch wide toughy locking center console would fit there. So that might be what we go for. Probably the last thing that we would need to add is uh, some sort of iPhone holder or iPad mount. Um, I like the Honda Garage Perfect Squeeze um, iPhone or a uh, tablet mount. Nice and easy, super beefy and never have to worry about it. Um, and compared to my usual method of putting my iPhone here and letting it slide all over the place and usually onto the floor. Um, it'd be nice to have something that's a little bit more secure. <laughs> it's time to work on some other things, I guess. Um, I've got some Baja Designs LP9 Sports to go on here on the bumper, obviously. And I guess we'll see. We're gonna have to figure out a camper situation and I kind of want to sort out different suspension. That's me parked on the side of the road. Till the next time, I'll see you later.